T. Rowe Price Capital Appreciation Fund versus Wellington. Uh, Todd from Tucson writes in wondering why I, uh, I don't cover T. Rowe Price Capital Appreciation Fund as it seems to have beaten Wellington handily. Not accusatory, just wondering, hey, it looks like this fund's great. Well, how come you haven't covered it? So let's let's, run, let's compare these. I don't, uh, off the top of my head, I don't know the first thing about the T. Rowe Price Capital Appreciation. At least that comes to mind. PRWCX is a ticker. PRWCX, as you can see here. And it uh, looks like that started in 1986. So we got some track record. That's good. All right, so we're going to go back to Portfolio Visualizer. We're going to look at the... Let me just make this thing bigger so I don't even have to wear my glasses. My old man glasses. Old man river. All right, so we're going to see here. PR, T. Rowe Price Capital Appreciation Fund uh has going back to 1986 has handily beaten wellington yeah 462 uh, ten thousand bucks invested in 1986 is worth 462 thousand now ten thousand dollars invested in wellington is worth what is that 253 so that's uh that's a big difference uh or 270 something like that 253 um not too shabby uh compounded annual growth rate for t row price is 11.28 compounded annual growth for wellington is 9.59 Max worst year, 27% and well in uh, T Row Price, 22% in Wellington. Pretty doggone close similarities in terms of downside risk. Max drawdown, a little bit more for a T Row, but not much. 36 versus 32. All right, so so far so good. Um let's take a look here. Worst year was uh T Row Price uh 20. Yeah, we already talked about that. Uh so far this year, Wellington is down 13 12 and a half, where T Row Price is about nine and a half, and that's as of I'm not sure when that's as of. I think April. Um, does it show us when it's as of? We'll just yeah, April. Okay, good. So let's keep looking here. Uh, let's see what else we want to go here. This is portfolio income. Wow, look at that. Reinvesting income. So back then, if you had two, what was that? How much did we start with here? Ten thousand bucks or hundred thousand bucks? Ten thousand schmackets. We had portfolio income back then of twenty two hundred bucks. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this is more like it. that doesn't make any sense. So we had seven hundred. So Wellington at a thousand. T Rowe Price at seven fifty six. Why do they got twenty? Eh, that doesn't. Why do they got two straight two years of twenty two twenty six? That is weird to me. Let's see what else we got. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sure, I buy those numbers anyway. But you can see either way the growing income. So right now it's paying forty thousand dollars of income. Uh, where T Rowe prices are, where uh, Wellington's paying twenty three thousand. Yeah, we'll we'll come back around. That, I don't know if I quite buy that. So it's forty thousand dollars of income. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the, the the different portfolios. What these guys are. So we got large cap value, large cap growth. So T Rowe price is basically fifty percent of his portfolio is in the S and P five hundred. Wellington is going to be, uh, what's that, 50, eh, 53%, 55% at base of the S&P 500. T. Rowe Price has 18% mid-cap growth. Isn't that interesting? Wellington's got uh, ex-U.S. developing markets. So Wellington's got 9% in uh, developing markets. Neither have much in emerging. They both have a lot of corporate bonds, 15% corporate bonds. And short-term treasuries, all right? So Wellington's got 20% uh, short-term treasuries. Uh, T. Rowe Price has 17% short-term treasuries. So the only really big difference here is Wellington's got, uh, T. Rowe Price got 18% in mid-cap growth, um, where Wellington instead has about 9% in uh, in U.S. developed marketing, um, developed markets, yeah, Europe and whatnot. And that's interesting. All right, so let's keep looking here. So you can see the equity composition here. Um, T. Rowe Price is uh, 61% U.S. stocks, 2% uh, international stocks, and 10% cash. There you go. All right, so they're basically 65, 35. Uh, one, so, uh, what, what is it? Oh, okay, here we go. I'm, yeah, right, about 65, 35. Of their stock positions, they got about 18% mid cap, the rest in large cap. All right, so they're diversified among stocks. That's good. Well, here's the issue. Non-investment grade is a credit quality. That's what I didn't like. Junk bonds. So they got a bunch of junk bonds in there. So that's uh, of their fixed income, over two-thirds are junk bonds. 
So that's bothersome to me. So you're going to come up here and you're going to see the portfolio composition, short-term treasuries, corporate bonds, but they got about 7% that's not allocated in this. And that's got to be junk bonds and of the corporate bonds, you know, of their corporate bonds, the, the vast majority, if not the entirety is junk bonds. And that, that is a concern of mine. Um, but the numbers are the numbers, man. It had a little bit less of return and a little bit more downside risk than Wellington, not much. Whereas Wellington doesn't have that kind of uh, bond exposure. You can see right here, there's no junk bonds in Wellington. Uh, we got single A, double A, triple A, triple B, all investment grade. That's the difference. All right, so let's see over the last 10 years. I imagine the Wellington probably got smoked by this guy some because of mid cap growth. And we'll go the last, yeah, right there, 10 years and see what we're looking at here. And I bet T. Rowe Price has smoked it. Yeah, big time. Well, no, I won't say big time. Similar, uh, 12 and a quarter is the, the compounding annual growth rate, nine and a half for Wellington. Yeah. Uh, actually, T. Rowe Price had less downside risk. And that's just because this past year in 2022. That's interesting to me. All right, so let's go back into the aughts because that's always my my thing is always the aughts. How did it do in the aughts? Um, that's what my biggest concern is, the aughts. So let's go to the aughts, and that's when the markets had the, the beginning of the decade or the millennium, uh, millennial. We had that huge bear market, and then we got uh, at the back end of that decade, we got another huge bear market. So, well, it's your price did better, even in the aughts. Look at that. That's interesting. That's interesting, man. Yeah, I, all right. Huh. That is interesting. Not going to lie to you. Look at that. 9.28 in the odds. Wellington 6.15. I mean, that's just fact, Jack. Max drawdown is about the same. Worst year, pretty doggone close. Looks, all right, let's go to the 1990s then. If we're going to be doing that. 1990-1999. Let's see how that shook out. So the up years, we'll see how that shook out. Um, now willing to do a little bit better, not much, but a little bit. That's interesting. All right. Let's just go to 1986 to 1989, 1989. Okay. And of the three, yeah. So of the eighties, nineties, aughts, and teens, uh, uh, of those three of the four decades, you know, again, we got half a decade in the 80s, uh, T. Rowe Price outperformed. Right, so now let's see about distributions. We're going to take $500 a year, and we're going to take, uh, yep, there we go. Good. Let's see how this, we're going to do uh, time-weighted returns. Mm. So I'll go back to... Right there, there we go. Yeah, man, look at that, I can't argue with that. It smoked in terms of taking five, $500 a year out each and every year, it smoked it, the Wellington. No, there's no two ways around that. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. I just don't buy that income, You're getting Let's just see what Pete, well, hold on a second, we'll show up. So right now it's paying a 0.9%, 0.96% distribution yield on this guy. Down 8.6% as of uh, Friday's close. Expense ratio is about uh, a little bit more than twice that of the Wellington. Um, I just want to see, let's see if we can find dividends here. Does it give me dividends? I thought it did, maybe not. Maybe not. All right, here we go. Distribution yields. All right, cool. All right, so the previous, uh, 1.9. So the course of 2008, it paid $1.98 a share. So December, it paid $3.41 a share on a price of $33.78. So that's a distribution. It paid over 10% distribution, two seventy two. So, I mean, I you know, it's hard to see how that portfolio, I, I just can't imagine I'm getting all that income but i mean you know it's been a, if you bought this for ten thousand dollars let me just show what i'm talking about so we're gonna go back to i just it's tough to imagine that it was paying unless i had some especially when i came right out the gate i just want to show what i'm talking about here uh to play income yeah display income right there 
you're telling me that it, let's make sure I got this right. 1986, yeah, it looks good in year to date. One year to date, yeah. Rebalance, cash flows, display income. There we go. All right, cool. So you're going to tell me that this guy paid in returns 22% of the portfolio in 1987. I don't buy that, man. Now, it could have a major capital gain distribution, I grant you, but man. 22%, I mean, that wouldn't be 22%. I just, that's tough to see. Now, let's take a look now. We got 40,000 as a distribution in 2021. Let's go back and see how much this portfolio is worth in 2021. I mean, if that's, that, I mean, look, I get it. It's just, it's like 22%. I would, how do they get that right out of the gate when they just, when they just initiated the fund? Do they bunch it by a dividend? I don't get it, man. But either way, all right. So it paid forty thousand dollars of distributions in two thousand twenty-one, and the final balance is four eighty-one. So we take that's about ten percent, man. That's well, about an average forty divided by four eighty-one. Yeah, eight point three percent. Go back to Schwab here, and we see they paid uh, three point four one at nineteen eighty-one, um, and uh, we're down by eight percent. So it was probably up. And we'll just say is that 35 bucks a share. I guess that's right. 3.41 divided by roughly 35 bucks a share. Yeah, right there. Damn, that's crazy. The value of dividends, baby. Anyway, so great fun. I I'm not you got no argument for me. Had more mid cap growth, had more junk bonds, inherently is, is riskier, but you know, the numbers that didn't get smoked in 2008, it just did not. And uh yeah, you came out freaking smell like roses. So if you can have access to it, I'd buy it. I, I just got Wellington. I'm comfortable with Wellington, so I'll stick with Wellington. But if you have access to this, yeah, by all means, uh, be my guest. All right, thanks again. We'll see you.